So I remember one of the first Notion built solutions that I actually handed over to a client as a deliverable was a sales pipeline. And that was really an eye opener for me in terms of what was possible with a no code tool like Notion. And now that Flotion is actually ready for use, I thought I might revisit that same problem. So I will just be building a sales pipeline from scratch in Flotion, talking through the process, coming up with a little bit of a plan as we go along. And if you are building out your own sales pipeline, if you're also building it for a client or maybe for your team, hopefully you can follow along and get some inspiration for your own build. So for the Flotion builders, you will notice we have a new menu for frameworks, which is part of the new update. And we also have some new components, which we may or may not be using in this particular build. So sales pipeline for our branding agency. We'll come up with a little bit of a plan for the workspace. Okay, so this is a very preliminary bullet point list of what we may want to include in this pipeline. And this is the fun part, creating our new pages to, uh, to meet those workspaces. Uh, this is certainly much quicker than the original build that I did for that client some time ago. I'm just gonna rename these and, uh, and get the workspaces set up. I think these would be, this would be enough to, to get started. Um, I'll probably start with, um, with our audience and kind of, you know, who is it that this design agency, branding agency will want to be targeting? Simplest way to get started on that is probably to start fleshing out some buyer personas. Um, so we can use this user personas template component, drag this in, and probably the first step for this particular client project would be to, to start fleshing out these personas. So listing some things like their key use cases, pain points, um, any actions we expect them to take, um, what they want, what they need and then more basic information like demographics and psychographics. So we would need a space for this. So I think that's fine to just kind of start with the personas there. And then we're gonna to have to figure out this pipeline and what the, the key areas should be. So I'm just gonna start with a component for it and then we can adjust it as needed. So I'm gonna drag this in here and maybe based on the type of customers or the personas that we have in mind. Um, so let's say that these are mostly, okay, maybe rebuilding or, you know, these, these use cases aren't super relevant for this branding agency. So let's just say uh, brand identity project. And we can create a new use case here. So let's say that uh, these are, you know, looking for a full brand identity project. Um, we could re repurpose this pipeline to, uh, to, to meet those industries. So let's say alcoholic beverages, uh, we might have another industry which could be, I don't know, maybe they want to work with accountants or in accounting. Maybe there will be another uh, segment that we have, which is just, you know, tech startups, let's say, that we want to do some, some branding work with tech startups. And finally, what could be another, I don't know, e-commerce, some online shops. And maybe we can just kind of leave it there. And uh, we already had a tech we already had a startup group. We can leave it there for now. Um, and so we have kind of, for this base pipeline, we might just have it listed or grouped by industry. 
and then we can obviously drag our contacts into um, those rows by industry and then we can figure out these key stages of the pipeline so by default we've got not contacted contacted in conversation circle back active i think we're probably going to be sending proposals for this design agency for this branding agency so we might even add a group and i can do that over here which is just you know proposal sense that might be um, that might come after the uh, the in conversation. So not contacted. This is just our prospecting list. We reach out. I'm not sure which channel yet. We can figure that out here. Uh, in conversation, going back and forth. Maybe you even set up a call, and then maybe some of these contacts have been sent a proposal, and we're waiting to hear back. If uh, the conversation doesn't go anywhere, then uh, we may put them in this circle back later. Um, or we could put them in idle if they really, you know, not interested at the moment. And then obviously the ones that do accept a project we can set as active and perhaps even those, uh, we could either keep them here or we can archive the ones that are past, you know, completed projects. So I'm actually for this branding agency pipeline, I'm actually all right with these um, key steps and we can maybe come back to this and add more detail to it. Uh, feedback, that may, we can look at that a little bit later. What are some other things? So, I mean, for the pipeline itself, kind of the prospecting stage is probably going to be worth giving some guidance on. Um, the best way to do this, I wonder, we could just have more of a, a table, a list of all the contacts here, as well as organizations, but I might, we might just uh, mesh those together. So obviously this is filled with a lot of dummy data to kind of see how the CRM uh, might look once it's completed, but on handing it over to the client, we either have a list of prospects and contacts that we can fill this with, or we just hand it over um, an empty the dummy data. I'm going to add a view and I'm going to have it be the organization's sales and it should show up there. So we have a list of our organizations. These have some industries connected to them as a drop down select list and the type of uh, prospects or the type of contacts organization uh, or the relationship that we plan to have with this organization is um, also a drop down list and then we can select the contacts that belong to various organizations so we have our list of contacts here which we may also group by segment or by um, by source huh I think for the prospecting stage, we might just filter this to show their status is, we could just have all of these are, are not contacted um, and we might group it to be a little bit more useful. So we could group it by type, the type of relationship just so that we can really hone in on maybe our client prospecting. So I'm actually picking this up again after being slightly interrupted, but we are back in the build. So I, I think what needs to happen is we can tidy this up a little bit further, but first thing I'm just going to continue adding the main components to each section. So I think a meetings section is going to be useful. So we can use this component here to do so. Drag this in. So if I wanted to add a new meeting for today, there are a couple of templates that we could start from. But I mean, let's just say that this is a first introduction call um, with Acme Inc. We can give it a contact. Let's say it's Isabella. Could even use this template to get started. So now, this will show on our meetings 
and actually we can even give it a time. If you just use <coughs> notions um, at functionality, so we could say at uh, 2 p.m., you know, today at 2 p.m. And that's also gonna show in our calendar. So that's handy. Meetings, so that's an easy one. Projects, so this would be related to, you know, any prospecting or sales kind of pipeline campaigns, projects that we have set either internally as a team or for ourselves, just to kind of group tasks and operations within this pipeline. You don't need this in a pipeline. Maybe you're using another project management software. Maybe you have another workspace that's going to keep track of these projects and campaigns, but I'm going to keep it here just so that we have uh, a bit of an overview to group together specific efforts in our pipeline. So we might even give these um, these tags some more relevant labels. So for example, we might have, doo -doo -doo -doo. we could have it by the stage. So we could have like, initial outreach projects, we could have some follow up projects. And we might have some, maybe one of our one piece of the pipeline is going to be receiving testimonials and feedback. Not sure, but we could start to group various campaigns based on this. And then we can give actions and tasks within those projects. Targets, I think it's always helpful to have a specific set of goals for what we're working on. So we could use this all objectives component. And if I drag that in, we could also update these tags to be more relevant. Or if we just wanted to do a quick brainstorm, we could actually make use of the new frameworks tab. And we could use, we could just create a quick smart goals um, component. And we could use this to um, kind of pressure test our, uh, the targets that we're setting for ourselves. So we can use that familiar framework, which is, you know, make it specific, select a metric, make sure it's achievable, uh, relevant and time bound. So we could, we could keep this here just to kind of <clears throat> keep our objectives in check. And once we confirm it, we could add it to this objectives board. That's one way we could use this targets area. Contacts, I think that is um, already covered in some of these other areas. Feedback, this might just be a view of our pipeline, which is filtered to show a uh, feedback property. So let's go in here and one of the properties should be feedback here. So what we can do is filter this to show only contacts who have given feedback. So it's not empty. Feedback's not empty. And we could make these groupings a little bit more relevant as well. And now we have a bit of a board, which is showing all the feedback that we've gotten from our pipeline, from our contacts, um, and it's grouped by the segment. So that we could use that as kind of a, a bit of a shortcut board um, for feedback. Now, emails and scripts, we might end up combining these. Emails, this could be, I mean, if you're using another CRM or email marketing software tool, then of course the actual sending and tracking of those emails uh, will happen in that software. But we could also plan and um, track some key information about the emails that we're sending in a table like this, uh, keep the status of these emails. And we can also, if we had some 
specific scripts that we wanted to store, we could create them as a template in this emails database. And we could also just use this scripts workspace to brainstorm various, uh, yeah, various scripts for our outreach, for our follow-up, etc. So I'm just gonna use a brainstorming board, which is linked to a content database. And we could just use this email um, label. We might, we might repurpose this whole brainstorming board to be email scripts. So it's email specific. And what we're gonna do is let's again, make these more specific. So let's say like cold outreach scripts. And then we could have maybe like warm outreach. We could have uh, call scripts if, if that's part of our outreach and we could have maybe follow up and maybe even we could have um, another group that was like icebreakers or something. Personally, I don't do a whole lot of cold outreach. So this is not a world that I spend a lot of time in, but maybe this is a way that you could keep track of specific scripts. So let's say this was just a, you know, basic outreach, basic cold outreach, could write down some ideas for what that script might include, any contacts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that way we could always just kind of, if we get an idea for a new script, we could add it in here, keep track of it like that. And then if this were, you know, the script that we wanted to end up using, could copy it and add it as a template to our emails database. So that if we start a new email, we could reference it from this template. So let's say that we had a cold outreach script. We just copied pasted from that other um, page. Hey, contacts came across your site on XYZ, etc, etc. Love to talk further best your name. Now that is definitely a winning outreach script, but you can see that now if I wanted to start from that script, then I can just hit that template button and we would have a new email with that content. So we could keep track of our emails and our scripts in here as well. And then the last piece that I had listed for our kind of um, basic sales pipeline workspace was a place to keep track of our tasks and actions. And these will be linked to those projects, which we've, uh, which we have listed in that timeline view. So this will be our actions board. And it is grouped by status and priority. And let's say that one of our projects was initial outreach. So what was one of our industries? Let's say tech startups research. So we wanted to fill our pipeline for this, uh, for the tech startups uh, segment. Maybe we could have some specific, um, specific tasks tied to that project. So high priority, um, I don't know, browse, LinkedIn and list first 20 candidates. Maybe that's a specific task that we could set and we can choose the project. It's not gonna be pre-launch campaign. It's going to be our tech startups research. So that's now linked and it's on our actions board. If we start it, we can keep track of it in this, uh, in this Kanban board and then when it's done, we can hit archive and it will be stored in our archive view of the actions database. So that's going to be a way for us to keep track of to do's. Uh, maybe, you know, other to do's could be more related to specific contacts and prospecting. So, you know, uh, prepare for meeting with Jeff. Um, that might be linked to another project that is, uh, in our timeline and effectively this could be a way to just, you could also assign 
tasks to various people on your team if you're sharing this with, uh, with your team, or you can just keep it as your own personal to-do list for this sales pipeline. So let's just quickly review what we have so far. Our home page is empty for the moment. We have a workspace to list our personas. Maybe we're just gonna have this uh, be more specifically about personas. Is there more that we could add here? I'm sure there is, but for now, it's just useful to have a place where we can keep track of um, our personas. We have a prospecting space, which is filtered to only show contacts who have not been contacted yet. So this is our list of people. So this is where when we're out there doing our research for various types and segments of clients, we can just add it to this prospecting list. We could even add, um, maybe let's just have a page. Um, if you are actively using these tools, maybe you won't necessarily need it. But again, if you're sharing with a team, we could just have a tools, a list of tools that we're using for our pipeline and for our outreach and prospecting efforts. So I'm gonna go into components again, and I think it's at the bottom. Favorite tools. And if I drag this in, this is this database has um, has a relatively large list of tools baked into it, but by no means exhaustive. So we can remove this favorite um, filter. We could group this gallery so that we can better navigate it. So I'm going to group it by tags. And what we're looking for are some tools that will help us with our prospecting so and our pipeline. So maybe we're using HubSpot, um, maybe we're using MailChimp or Gmail um, for our research. I'm thinking of tools like Clutch and you know some of these social media sites we mentioned. So we said LinkedIn. Um, so I think you could add your own tools to this uh, database. So let's say that we wanted to um, you know, add clutch.co as a tool. We can add that website link um, and we could even specifically say, you know, prospecting as a new tag. And then if we have favorited it, let's show two more groups. Then if I create that filter of favorite tools again, then we will have a list of tools that are gonna help us with our pipeline. So these are just a few of the ones that we quickly selected here. Um, and then the links link out directly. So if I just wanted to quickly head over to my HubSpot dashboard, I could do so with that link there. So we could have a tools page, maybe that's gonna be helpful just to uh, remind ourselves of some handy tools out there. And how did we get here? So we were prospecting, then we said we have our pipeline, which is by status and subgrouped by industry. I think that's fine. Meetings, we have a meetings page. We have a project timeline. We have some targets for ourselves to keep track of and try to hit. We have a space to keep track of any feedback that we're getting. Emails we can plan and we can even add our scripts into that database and brainstorm them on the scripts page. To do's, we have a list of tasks and actions for us and some favorite tools. So I think that this would be a pretty good foundation for any sales pipeline um, where you know the basic stages need to be covered in terms of contacts. You need to be able to keep track of the status of those contacts and their details, a place to keep track of meetings, set yourself some targets. Um, and if any of this is happening via email, then obviously this emails database could be useful. Um, maybe there's even a case to be made for uh, repurposing this emails table uh, for other 
social and communication platform. So if you were doing a lot of outreach via Twitter or via Instagram, we could probably repurpose this table um, to, to instead of emails, it could be, um, it could be outreach. We could even add the uh, a property for the channel that we're using. If there are only a few options, then we can preset those. So let's say maybe LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. This obviously wouldn't be emails anymore, but you could update that. And then we could even link this again to our, to a specific contact or a list of contacts. So I'm going to make this a relation, search for contacts. And did we rename this map? Contacts database, that's not helpful. Rename it to be sales pipeline. And now when I search for that, it should be quite easy. So relation, contact, contacts database sales pipeline, that's the one. Yes, we will keep it. And now if I were wanting to keep track of who I sent this particular script to. So maybe this is like a Twitter outreach. Um, what would you call it? Blast? It's, maybe that's not the right word. You could select the list of contacts who have received this outreach communications message. So that's one way we could keep track of our comms. We have some scripts. All of these have already been mentioned. So the final step for me would be to create something of a home dashboard, which I typically just like to make as a summary of the key workspaces in this flock. I think we might just have this as our focused pipeline. So I think that's the main bulk of the build. I will probably clean it up a little bit and share this template with you all as a flow in the showcase. So you can, uh, you can clone it and start from this template yourselves. But of course, the idea of these Flotion builds is that you just get an idea, get a feel for how you can set up these multi-page workspaces for yourself making use of the components to save yourself some time, but also having the flexibility to kind of adjust them and make them more suitable to your needs. So enjoy and until the next video.